in this video i'll be explaining what is mathematical induction and we'll be doing two principle for the mathematical induction first principle of finite induction and second principle of finite induction so let us first state the first principle of finite induction it says that let s be a set of positive integers with following properties the first property is that integer 1 belongs to the set so we consider 1 belong to the set that is the first condition and the second condition is whenever the integer k belong to the set the next integer that is k plus 1 this also belongs to the set s so if two properties hold that whenever one belong to s and for k belonging to s k plus one must belong to the set then s is a set of all positive integers so you notice that we have considered that s is a set of positive integers and here i have not explicitly mentioned all positive integers and what is we want to prove is the set of all positive integers so there is a minute difference in the given condition and what we want to prove now let us see that what is the proof of the statement and for the proof i will be using the well ordering principle this well ordering principle i have done in my last video so now let us consider that t be the set of positive integers which are not in s so t be set of positive integers which are not in s which are not in s and we assume that t is non-empty and we assume that t is non-empty because if we take that t is empty in that case there is no positive integers which are not in s and hence automatically that s is a set of all positive integers and i've started the proof with a contradiction so let a t be the set of positive integers which are not in s so obviously that means there are some element in t which do not belong to s and we have also assumed that t is the set non-empty so now by well ordering principle we say that as t is non-empty and obviously t is a subset of the positive integers so we can say that t has a least element so t has a least element or i can say that t has a smallest element and call it as a so let's a is the smallest element in t and as we said that t is non-empty and t is a subset of positive integers and we have also seen that one belongs to s so the least possibility in the positive set integers is one and so on but one belong to the set s so obviously so as per the selection as per given condition what we can say is that a is strictly greater than one so a cannot be one because one belongs to s so we are considering the element in t which are not a part of s or we can say that t consists of the positive integers which are not in s so a is strictly greater than 1 and as a is the smallest element so a minus 1 does not belong to t so because a is smallest element in t so because this was smallest element so a minus 1 definitely does not belong to t and so this implies that a minus 1 belong to s but now look at the second condition of the s whenever the integer k belong to s the next integer k plus 1 also belong to s so if a minus 1 belong to s this implies that a minus 1 plus 1 should belong to the set s so this implies a belongs to s and this contradicts our choice so that means our initial selection that t is a set of positive integers which are not in s and assuming that t is non-empty is not correct so we need to consider that this implies t is empty so when t is empty so this automatically implies that s is a set of all positive integers so this is a set of all positive integers so now we can see that first principle of finite induction follows easily from the well ordering principle in fact in some of the literature the two statement uh, finite induction and well ordering principle are said to be equivalent and now let's take an example for the finite induction consider this example prove 1 plus 2 plus 2 square plus 2 cube plus up till 2 raised to the power n minus 1 equal to 2 to the power n minus 1 using mathematical induction and for the solution of this case now i need to consider the set of positive integers and here we'll have two conditions the first condition is that one belong to the s and the second condition is whenever we choose k belong to s then k plus one must also belong to the s so using these two condition we say that s consists of all positive integer and hence the result is true for all n which belong to the positive integers or we can say that it is a set of natural number now to prove this statement let us apply this condition on this n 
and the least possibility for n is 1 so the first thing that we need to prove the result for 1 so now considering n is equal to 1 let us see what is there on the left hand side if i look at the left hand side this is simply 2 to the power n minus 1 so the last statement is 2 to the power 1 minus 1 which is 2 to the power 0 which is equal to 1 so that is actually only the first term and the right hand side we can see this is 2 to the power n minus 1 which means 2 to the power 1 minus 1 so that is same as 2 to the power 1 which is 2 minus 1 that is 1 so both are same so we can say that result is true for n is equal to 1 so result is true for n is equal to 1 and now by the induction step we assume that the result is true for n is equal to k so if we assume that result is true for n is equal to k so we can say that 1 plus 2 plus so on up till 2 raised to power k minus 1 this is same as 2 to the power k minus 1 so this is the assumption step that we have listed here that whenever k belong to s what we want to prove is that k plus 1 must belong to s so if we can show that k plus 1 belong to s then the result is true for a set of natural number or we say set of all positive integers and here now to prove n is equal to k plus 1 so we want to prove now the result for n is equal to k plus 1 so that means now let us look at what is left hand side so the left hand side is now 1 plus 2 up till 2 raised to power k minus 1 plus 2 to the power k so this is same as as we have seen that this expression now from the equation number 1 that we replace it as 2 to the power k minus 1 plus 2 to the power k. This is same as 2 times 2 to the power k minus 1. This is same as 2 to the power k plus 1 minus 1. And this is what we require and hence we get the result. Second principle of finite induction is same as the first principle. It says let S be the set of positive integers with following properties. So the first condition is same integer 1 must belong to the set. And second, it says whenever 1, 2, 3 up till k belong to S, the next integer k plus 1 also belong to the set S. So if this hold and this also hold, the second condition, then S be the set of all positive integers. Let us consider some example to understand second principle. And here I consider first example to show that n factorial is 1 into 2 into 3 up till n minus 1 into n. We know this as a formula also. So now let's prove this using the second principle of the mathematical induction. So taking the first condition, we know that whenever n is equal to 1, so we know that 1 factorial is same as 1. And when n is equal to 2, we consider this as 2 factorial. For 2 factorial, what we require is we require all the previous values. So this is 2 into 1 factorial and that is same as 2 into 1. And continuing the similar manner, say for example, I want to find out the value for n. So in this case, when I take n factorial, so I would be requiring all the previous expression up till n minus 1. So that induction step is working over all the previous value. And hence, whenever you open n into n minus 1 factorial, so that means I have applied the previous step of the n minus 1 factorial. When I open n minus 1 into n minus 2 factorial, so I must have applied the induction step for n minus 2 factorial. And so continuing in this manner, we get that this expression is equal to 1. So this means for this, we require the second principle of finite induction, which is just an extension of the first principle. Consider another example. And here I've considered the Lucas sequence. And except for the first two term, each term of the sequence is the sum of the preceding two. So let's define here a reconciliation. A1 is 1. And let's consider another term A2 as 3. So these are the first two term. And so now the next terms can be written as the sum of the preceding two. So I write a n minus 1 plus a n minus 2. And for all n which is greater than or equal to 3. So the least value that I can write for the sequence is for the third term. As you can see that 4 is the addition of 1 and 3. The 7 is the addition of 3 and 4. 11 is the addition of 7 and 4. And so on we continue. Now what we need to prove here is that in this Lucas sequence, we want to prove that a n is always strictly less than 7 by 4 to the power n. So I intend to prove this upper bound for the Lucas sequence. And to prove this, I'll be using mathematical induction second principle. So let us do that. For n is equal to 1, we require a 1. It is strictly less than 7 by 4 to the power 1, which is 7 by 4, which is true. Because a 1 value is 1, as we can see that and this value that we have given as an upper bound this is 7 by 4 so the result is true now let us consider what is n is equal to 2 because for a n in general i will be requiring the previous two terms so i have written now for 1 and for 2 so this is a 2 which is 
equal to 3 from the expression and from this case this is strictly less than 7 by 4 to the power 2 which is same as 49 by 16 so that is also true so we can see that 49 by 16 is always greater than 3 so we continue in this manner and for n is equal to k we assume that the result is true for k minus 1 which is strictly less than 7 by 4 to the power k minus 1 and also result is true for a k minus 2 which is strictly less than 7 by 4 to the power k minus 2 now if i want to prove it for the kth term so we can see that kth term is the sum of the preceding two so a k minus 1 and a k minus 2 so just sum these so whether we require all the value or whenever we require the more than one expression we say that it is generalized one which is the second principle so this is strictly less than a k minus 1 this is 7 by 4 to the power k minus 1 and plus a k minus 2 this is 7 by 4 to the power k minus 2 now let's take some of the terms that we can take common so this is 7 by 4 to the power k minus 2 which is common inside we will have 7 by 4 plus 1 and this expression is same as 7 by 4 to the power k minus 2 and here we got 11 by 4 which is strictly less than 7 by 4 to the power k minus 2 and this expression this is 11 by 4 let me to replace this as 7 by 4 to the power 2 so this is same as 7 by 4 to the power k and hence the result is true for n is equal to k because we got 7 by 4 to the power k for the a k term and this is what we desired to prove